ました。What is good? We're back. We got our guy Austin Abbott. Two T's and two F's. Don't miss the two T's and B's and F's. He's got so many doubles going on. What's up, man? How you doing? Good, man. I'm happy to talk rookies. Um, uh, we've been talking rookies for a minute, Casey. It's all yeah. we talk. It's all we talk. It's, yeah. it's all we talk. I don't yeah. know any. I don't know any vets. I don't know any other players. <laughs> That's what that's what the, that's what the guy likes. So I bring on what he likes, and we and we, you know, I want to talk to people with what they're passionate about. And I know right now that's what you've been passionate, but the passion is certainly running out. It is time to get some new information, right? <laughs> it is. Um, dude. I'm ready to move on to redraft. Let's uh, yeah, let's, yeah. Let's do it. So we are we are going to hit you with the top 24 uh, rookie ranking super flex tight end premium. Going to tear him up a little bit here, um, and this is probably the second to last iteration of these for me. Um, until we get some draft capital and some other pieces, because I'm still going through film and, and look, going back on guys and looking at things and finding new information and, um, you know, watching film and, 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 and the analytical side of things are, are all pivotal parts of pieces. And, uh, you know, film watching can be um, sometimes, you know, you didn't see something or you weren't seeing it a certain way. So I think it's important to always revisit some film as well. So. Uh, all right, so right off the rip, uh, I think I know where you stand here with the top seven, so we won't spend a ton of time. I'm, I'm going to go right off the rip. Caleb Williams, Marvin Harrison, tier. Drake May, Jaden Daniels, probably a tier. I'll take, I think I like May more than Daniels at this point. Uh, and then Neighbors, Roma Dunze, tier, and then Brock Bowers uh, for me. Now, me and Big Co. on the, one of the last episodes we did had a, had a pretty good conversation about you know the quarterbacks are certainly a risky proposition right certainly more of a 50 50 than the wide receivers so i think your stance mm -hmm. is kind of the other way of of hey i'm gonna take these wide receivers so hit me with your uh top seven there yeah so i have marvin harrison jr as the 101 caleb williams as the 102 malik neighbors at 103 and then for me personally feel like i have a little bit of a tier gap because i love rome i have rome adunze at the 104 love rome um i i i just i don't think he's quite necessarily with malik and marvin i, I just have him a little bit lower 105 Jaden daniels 106 is drake may and then 107 brock bowers and i would all have them in the same tier yeah, so you're 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 taking all three wide receivers over the two quarterbacks, and just because of kind of what I said, just a little risky. You know, it's a little bit. I don't know exactly what the splits are, but it seems like it's more risky to take the quarterback. Now, for me, I I want to take the quarterback because I'm not necessarily saying that I'm going to go into the season with Drake May and Jaden Daniels on my team, and it's not that Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze aren't going to have bargaining power, but I just feel like the the need and want for quarterback in the league, uh, it gets real thirsty real quick out there. So, um, you know, I, I would be, you know, trading one of those guys probably for a different quarterback and using that as the chip to get a different quarterback because it's really hard in Superflex to make a trade for a quarterback not involving a quarterback. So that gets me into a, a quarterback sweepstakes uh, and, and at a pretty high level because it's unknown and it's sexy and it's fun. Um, so uh, that's kind of my rationale there, but I completely understand the idea. It does. It makes more. It's, it's less risk averse, I think, right? Kind of your approach there. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Casey, I want to I want to touch on one thing. So you you technically have Malik neighbors in, in like a tier three three in in your rankings is, yeah is i got correct? i got the two quarterbacks because i like the quarterbacks just for what i the reason that i stated and then i'm going malik and adunze because i don't for me i don't see i think marv is just on a pedestal right now and maybe that's a me problem i know a lot of people are you know neighbors and marv are the same i don't i don't, I don't think it's a crazy gap um mm -hmm. but i do i do think there is a little bit of a gap there potentially um and i and i think roma dunze is i i love roma dunze I think he's just as, I mean, I'm not going to be surprised if any one of those three guys um, are better than the other, right? Casey, let me say one thing. It, it's funny to me how you are now on an island by yourself where you're like, oh, Marv is a tier better than than uh, Malik. And it's like, dude, for the longest time, it was always like, like everyone agreed with that 
thought yeah. process. And now it's like, no, everybody has them like neck and neck. And <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's just interesting how like it's flipped, you know, yeah. it's it's like, you know, Ma- neither of them show up at the NFL combat or sorry, Ma- Malik, what Malik did a little bit. Right. But it's just interesting to me. I don't know if it's like, you know, prospect fatigue or, yeah. or like just the off season just dragging on. But like, it's interesting how these rankings just, you know, consensus tr- changes every you know and i'm saying how consensus completely changes their thought process and right. we really with, don't with have nothing like, else new, having yes, had happened new, right that's it nothing no, else no took new place. material right. that's exactly what right. i'm saying man right. so it's it's just interesting how like everyone's now fading your thought process when they all thought that initially but yeah. all right go on i'm, I'm no done. Yeah. no i think i think that's a great point um so all right well this is you know we, we kind of get interesting here uh it's been you know, we're we're now eight through twelve to get through the first round, essentially, in in our rankings here. Um, and JJ was really hot and heavy, and now it seemed like maybe maybe peaked a little too early, but I still have a lot of confidence that he's going to be top fifteen pick here. Um, but Penix seems to be the, at least you know l- l- trending up a little bit. I heard Schefter say that he he doesn't think he's getting out of the first round, um, which makes this top twelve a whole lot in- more interesting. Which is why you know. That one eight is definitely a tear break, but it's gotten a whole lot sexier here as time has gone on. Now the Buffalo Bills traded their wide receiver away. You could pretty much lock in if the Bill, you know, I, I talked in that last episode, maybe the Bills trade back and then they do something else and maybe they end up with like a guy like Javon Baker because that's who we were talking about. Anything could happen. But the Bills are most likely taking a wide receiver at 28 and your one nine just got even more valuable potentially, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, or your one ten or whatever it is. Um, so, that, that it's we're gaining value, gaining steam here. So, what do you say about this next kind of tier here? Is JJ up there for you, or is it the is it the wide receivers kind of next? Where where are you at here? No, my rankings get a little wild here. I think this is where uh, a lot changes. I have one oh eight is Brian Thomas Jr. Right, I ch- probably chalk for the most part, but but from here on out, it's is where it gets interesting. I'm still very bullish on Troy Franklin. I still believe he's going to be a first round draft pick. Um, I just think that the speed, the production, I just think it was way too good, man. I yeah. think it was way too good to be neglected. And and I think that he's going to find a way to sneak into the end of the first round of the NFL draft. And I, I again, the production was so damn good that I, for him to fall to the 109, like I'm, I'm happy with it. And like, yes, he's probably going to go closer to like 2-1 type of range, like 2-2 or maybe like the 112, whatever. He's going to go a few picks later. Um, but but I, I like Troy Franklin. I'm absolutely in on him. 110, Casey, this is where this is where things get interesting. The first running back off the board. Woo! I have Jonathan Brooks. I have Jonathan Brooks, mm. man. I really, really believe it's gonna be the cool thing to get back in on Jonathan Brooks as the RB1 in this class. When when the NFL draft happens, when the season rolls around, when we see Jonathan Brooks, who who is absolutely gonna be cleared by training camp. He's going to be good to go. So he's he's 100% going to be good to go for week one. No question about it. The next pick, Trey Benson, 111. So I have back-to-back mm. running backs at the end of the first. No I quarterbacks about, in here so far. No, man. I, I, I am, like for it. the most part, like, I, I'm pretty bearish on, on uh, at least in my rankings. That's how they, they reflect, right? And then the 112, the final pick in the first round, I have Xavier Worthy. Ah, I love it. I love it. What would we had an interesting question in in the disc or in the Patreon show last night, and you've got to already have them up there. But like, what would be Trey Benson, Jonathan Brooks that you think the pick in the second round that would get people jazzed up to get them up to that one ten, one twelve, one uh, eleven? Like Dallas, I think is one. Chargers, I think is one. Is there any other ones that would? Casey, yeah, I'm early to the party, man. I'm telling you, people are going to be with me when they see when they see (laughs) Jonathan Brooks or Trey Benson or Jalen Wright, whoever it is, when they see them land in Dallas or Minnesota. Right. Remember, they lost Alexander Madison. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, The Chargers are a perfect landing spot. Of course, Austin Eckler out of town. Um, I know J.K. Dobbins was visiting him. R.I.P. J.K. Dobbins. Mm. I I still I still believe Mm. in you. Uh, But (laughs) but um it's i'm just telling you what man when, when we see these running backs land in the perfect spot like i mean the raiders what about the raiders zamir i know zamir white right obviously right. Raiders probably, is a probably, good one raiders right is that's a another team um but there's a few teams out there that just makes a lot of sense and man when it happens casey 
it's it's almost like they're going to be it's almost like they're going to get too much hype and they're going to go a little too early, right? So uh, I think the 110, 111 is appropriate because I'm anticipating that they land in one of these spots and and that's the earliest they're going to get in my rankings. I'm telling you what, man, it's not like these running backs are going to be able to creep up to like 108, 107. It's not going to happen. So that's why I'm comfortable with Brooks at the 110, Benson at the 111. I like it. You know, when you... Uh... I can feel it down in my plums. <laughs> when you can yep. feel it down in those plums, baby. You got to do what you got to do. I mean, what are we doing? We're having fun. We're making rankings. Um, but I like it. I like it. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably a little more chalk here. I'm going one eight, one nine, one ten. The wide receivers. I'm going Xavier Worthy, Brian Thomas, and Lad McConkey for me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I got Lad jumping Troy Franklin a little bit there, um, but I, I, you know, I don't, I don't hate it. Um, and then I got the two quarterbacks coming in here at eleven and twelve. So I have Penix and McCarthy there, and I, I would. You know, I would be okay with putting Michael Penix up there in that other wide receiver tier because I like him better than JJ McCarthy. But for the for for how I've leveled this out and I've gone through it a million times, I like putting Penix and JJ at eleven and ten or eleven and twelve here because I just I don't I don't I don't think the hype is as warranted with JJ McCarthy. I don't think it should go that. It's not a slight on JJ McCarthy. I think he can be a good player. I just think you know we t- a lot of people talk themselves in to be him being a little too high there and we've seen that 1 million times um and you know what usually happens you know who's usually the 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 good player out of the draft and and you know sometimes but it's it's the guy it's the Josh Allen it's the Patrick Mahomes it's the guy who's like not the front runners of those quarterbacks it's the Herbert the guy who's kind of was slept on a little bit and back behind the and that's not always that Stroud. way but, you know right a lot right a lot of the times it seems to be not the not the guy who everybody was hyped on. It's it's the other guy um, that kind of ends up being good, which is uh, kind of interesting there. So that's that's kind of my top 12. That's where I'm at. So how do you open up uh, the, the two the two one through wherever your next tier goes to? Yeah. So this is a tier gap for me, right? Not just because it's, it's the beginning of round two. Like this is, this is also a tier gap in in my personal opinion. I have AD Mitchell at the 201, right? Uh, AD is a player that has a lot of, a lot of red flags. If you look at his analytical profile, sure. like I, yes, yes. There's a lot that I like about AD Mitchell. Of course, his hands, his size, his speed. Um, I wish the production was better, but um, that's why I have him here at the 201, the 202, J.J. McCarthy, right? This is where the quarterback run begins for me. J.J. McCarthy, 2-3, Michael Penix Jr. So I have them neck and neck, Ooh. I think. Uh, right. uh, where where did you have both quarterbacks? 1-11, one, 1-12. One one yeah. Right, okay. So I have 2-0-2, 2-0-3, a little bit behind you. Uh, 2 of 4 I have Keon Coleman. Wow. 2 of 5 I have Jalen Wright. And then 206, Casey. One of us is going to be wildly right. One of us is going to be wildly wrong. It, I have I have your boy, Lad McConkey at 206. Oh, oh, I'm you're... late, man. I know. I know. This is like, this is out of all our rankings. This is by far like the, the biggest difference. So yeah, maybe but... I'll become more up to speed. We have to see his NFL draft capital. We're still early in the process, Casey. Boy, he's saying. going in that. Yeah, I think he's a first rounder. Do you? Yeah. Do you? Well, I mean, so that? you know, AD a- a- Mitchell seems to make pop possibly some sense to Buffalo there in that spot, and that, I think that would you know juke him up. I think a lot of people's rate or rankings rather. Um, just, just I, I think Lad kind of fits with with what Buffalo is kind of showing you that they might want to do. Yeah. I think we you know we talked about this Diggs trade and like <laughs> last year and and Neil in the Discord shout out to him. I think he put this really well. Like end of the year last year kind of being a litmus test for how the bills can survive without digs and the offense that they're going to run um and you saw it operate a little differently and and no slight to digs 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 was what josh allen needed to become where he is but now josh allen can carry you a little bit more i think lad would fit perfectly in there but ad gives you that little bit bigger body kind of can do a couple of different things uh but i, I would love to see lad go to buffalo there that would and, and you keep him away from kansas city uh-huh. because i think if kansas city gets a shot at lad late in that first round that might be where they go um but casey 
what is the earliest, realistically, the earliest that Ladd McConkey goes in the NFL draft? Like pick yeah. 22, I, I, yeah, pick I, I think, 25? I think, I think, like I think right around at? that late 20s. So it's going to be, we're going to we're gonna try to have to squeeze him in there. Um, but I think, you know, if not, it's, I, I've been kind of reserving, like I think Troy Franklin at, at to kick off the next next round of round two mm-hmm. in the actual NFL draft going to Carolina would make a whole, mm-hmm. it gives him something totally different. It gives him a playmaker, something to get down the field. If Troy Franklin doesn't go there, but I think lad McConkey could be the same kind of thing. Opened up day two, uh, with a lad McConkey draft. If he doesn't go, uh, you know, I think Troy Franklin and lad McConkey are going to be fighting for that back end of day one, early mm-hmm. day two oh, yeah. first kind of guys off the board. So, uh, that's a good transition for me. I got Troy Franklin at two, one, uh, and then I have Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson at uh, two, two and two, three. So I'd, I'd kind of tear those guys up right there. And then I'd go a, a tier break and probably a guy maybe sitting by himself or maybe I throw the next guy in there. I've got A.D. Mitchell uh, right there at at uh, at 16 overall. Um, and then I'm going Bo Nix uh, on the next pick. Mostly just because a quarterback there, I don't love Bo Nix all that much, but I, you know, again, there's a really good chance that all these quarterbacks get first round draft capital, whether you like it or not. Like Bo Nix could easily go to the Denver Broncos. And then at that point, like, you know, he's, he probably creeps up into the first round of your super flex, you know, at least one of these other quarterbacks is creeping up there. If, Cause I, I think, you know, two out of these three are probably getting first round capital. And then just like we talked about with, Lad and Troy, I think if there's another odd man out quarterback, he's going top end of that that sec or yeah, top end of the second round when day two opens up. There's going to be a trade up or somebody's going. Raiders are coming up to get him or so you know somebody's going to come up whoever missed out on their quarterback there. So I got kind of Bo Nick sitting there at a kind of 17 overall, and I would kind of probably cap that at a tier break. So any thoughts there? Yeah, Casey, what's the record? Is it uh was it nineteen eighty three, the class with um Marino and Elway? Uh, yeah, and uh man, was it that class where they had six quarterbacks go round one? Um I think it was. I Got think it was because on it right now. Because this class, it could it could happen. I don't think it's going to, but like it's there's a chance, man. Um, I believe Marino was the sixth and final quarterback drafted in the first round uh, during that class. Six um, quarterbacks J- continue to Jim be the Kelly. record. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. Let's see here. We got the Jets drafted Todd. Uh, is that right? Blackledge. Uh, Tim. Uh, yeah. The, the I'm Duke. drawing a blank, man. There's there's a few other guys. But uh, I mean, we could see that happen again this year. I don't. I don't think it's gonna, man. But like, there, there's a world that exists where we get what five quarterbacks. Like, I don't mean to get off track here, but it's interesting to me, right? Like, I know Spencer Rattler is not going to be a first round no. pick, right? I think the conversation kind of begins with like that Bo Nix and Michael Penix Jr. Probably, right? right? Wouldn't you say so? Yeah. So right? it's, it's, it was it's it, those. It was Elway, Todd Blackledge, Blackledge, yes, who, yes. who calls games now, Jim Kelly. Uh, Tony Eason, Ken O'Brien was the Jets guy, I believe. Um, mm-hmm. and then Dan Marino. Sorry. That, yes, that's correct. That's what I meant. Um, but this class, man, of course we got Caleb, we got Jane Daniels, we got Drake may, we got JJ McCarthy. Those are four locked into the first round. Yeah. And then we're talking Penix, which, which Schefter believes will be a first. And I, I don't disagree. So then we're talking five right there. Bo Nix, Bo Nix is where the question like this work gets interesting. It's like is I Bo Nix going to be the six? Regardless, yeah. Whether it's, it's, it's Nix cool, or man. Rattler, or, uh, Rattler or Penix, uh, you know. Um, yeah, I we think see, that. Which is going to shake see, up your uh, rookie draft, man. You know, just is. I'm hearing rumors about uh, Joe Milton sneaking into the first. Uh, <laughs> the Niners are looking at him with the mm. thirty. No, no, I like. I love Brock. I'm a, I'm a Brock guy. Yeah, but uh, all right. Finish, uh, finish us up on the on the second <laughs> round here. Uh, where are we at? 207. So 207 in my rankings. I think you, Nicks. did you just have Jalen Wright? Was that your last one? Uh, I had uh Jalen Wright, 205, Lad McConkey. Lad McCon- oh yeah. I was forgettable right. that you had Lad McConkey at 206. 
<laughs> I know, man. I'm probably going to get torched in the comments. It's okay. It's all right. They're wrong. It's all right. They're wrong, baby. <laughs> they're wrong. Uh, 207, Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. 208, Braylon Allen, Ooh. running back out of Wisconsin. How uh, is that? Am I too hot? Am I too too early? Too uh, bullish? I, that, on he's a, he's he's got that love hate. It's either you love him or you hate him. You're, he's either mm-hmm. out not being drafted for you, or you know he's the second or third running back off the board. Yep, Xavier Leggett, two hundred nine, Blake Corum, the two ten for me. Jatavian Sanders is a two eleven, so he's my Wait, tight he's end two. Yeah, he's my tight end two. At Brock Bowers at the 107, J- Jatavian Sanders at the 211. So, mm. dude, that's that's a big gap. I'm mean, talking over a round. Yeah. And then to end it is Marshawn Lloyd at the 212. And I just want to give a shout out to Javon Baker at the 301. He's, he's right there. there. Slide yeah. him in there. Yeah. I, if that's where the tier kind of goes to, then I think that's all good. So, for me, I'm going Jalen Wright, Marshawn Lloyd, Blake Corum. Next three in the tier off the board. Um, so, that's 18 overall, 19 overall, and 20 overall. Then I'm going JT Sanders. Um, mm-hmm. Then I'm going Keon Coleman and Leggett. And then I'm going Braylon Allen to round out the top 24. Okay. Um, okay. So we got we got some differences there. You had Keon pretty high. And it's it's not a... I just like a lot of those other guys. I think Keon Coleman uh, is going to be... I think he's going to be the one who surprises a lot of people and is actually a really good player here. I think, I think he's taken a lot of strays because of a lot of red flags. But I, I, think, I think there's a really good player... Uh, inside of there uh, and he's got a lot of really good traits he's got some highlight real fun stuff and then I think he's he's got um, you know there's there's just some plays I can't get out of my head that were so good uh, that you just like you know I, I didn't I didn't want to take a shot on him when he was in that first round but now that he's he's going mid second ish yeah. um, and and later you know it's not I'm not really there could be times where I reach up and grab a little Keon Coleman because I'm I'm I am very interested in in the skill set. I just I didn't I, with all the red flags I didn't want to put him in the top of the first uh, or the bottom of the first rather. But now mid second, late second, I you know I can I can get behind that Keon Coleman going two six with our ADP um, and Roman Wilson was one that was you know two oh eight uh, in our ADP. So people really high and I think the NFL draft is going to be pretty high on Roman Wilson. So. I think he's going to be a big mover post draft. Braylon Allen, 211. Marshawn Lloyd, 212. This is ADP. Jatavion Sanders, 209. Jalen Wright, 207. Um, and then uh, Leggett is 301. So he's he's right outside of that. So, uh, you know, we got some we got some fun differences there. Jatavion Sanders, he could jump up for me if like if a team like Miami drafts him or if the Colts maybe miss out on. Uh, they don't get Brock at 15 and then second or third round, they go Jatavion Sanders, like, or, or maybe Washington gets in on Jatavion. There's a couple of teams that if, if Washington gets a quarterback and Washington goes Jatavion Sanders, I could be, there's some spots where he could shoot. And and Miami is the one that really jumps out to me. They don't have a ton of picks, um, Mm -hmm. at least in the, they got a, a first and a second, but I don't believe they have a third and then they got some fourths and fifths. So. Don't know that Miami would take him in the second, but that's one that has always kind of really intrigued me. And there could be, an, you know, the Colts, like I said, could be some landing spots that that make me get higher on Jatavion because I really like Jatavion Sanders. And, and you know, I'll, I'll trade in and, and grab another Jatavion. We're talking tight end premium here. So uh, and, and any anything else you want to you want to hit here at anybody that you were that you're lower on that you feel like maybe you were higher on before or. That you that you could see rising or any NFL draft talk you want to hit right before we get out of here? Uh a few thoughts. Like, man, I got Marshawn Lloyd at the 212. I don't think he's gonna be a second round pick for me. I think he's gonna fall out. I think we're gonna see like a Ricky Pearsall, Javon Baker. Yeah. So like someone in that I caliber. think getting draft capital. Yeah, I think that they're gonna jump him in my rankings. Like, this is where I'm at now, man. And it already feels like Marshawn should probably be snubbed out of it. Um, but Draft capital, Casey. I mean, NFL draft capital, whether we want to admit it or not, like we have to pay attention to it at the very least, right? Yeah, I think and that's what you I'll should t- get tattooed right right across that <laughs> collar. Draft capital. Just draft capital. <laughs> you and yeah, Ricky. Ana- analytics, draft capital, dr- <laughs> drink. Um, yeah. But if, if like, look, man, if Lad McConkey ends up going like 26 overall or 28 overall, if it's like on the high end, if Vlad he's goes to be, Buffalo, pants off, you know? He yeah, he's gonna be going up my rankings a lot. I know yeah. he'll probably be like the 101, 12 with Marvin Harrison Jr. for you. 
but uh, <laughs> but uh he's he you know dra- back to my initial point is is draft capital matters so much man we have to pay attention to it so like if we see a guy like Bo Nix fall to round two in the NFL draft of course he's gonna drop in my rankings but if he goes like I don't know 16 overall or like 14 overall to like let's just say a team reaches terribly like the Saints or Denver or whatever I'm just hypothetically speaking like yeah then we're gonna have to adjust our rankings Bo Nix is gonna you know rise and same with you know Michael Penix Jr. Like if a team yeah. reaches on him like 12 overall or something, yeah. of course he's going to be high. Like he's at the two, three in my rankings. He's probably going to be like a late first. Yeah. So these rankings are what they are for now, but they're going to change. They yeah. are, I would I would guarantee almost all of these players are going to move like at least a spot or something, you know? I think the odd quarterback out, if there is one, and I don't think there'll be two. I think there will be. I think it'll just be one if there is one. I think it's going to be much, much like you saw Will Levis goes early day two and then kind of hangs. Yeah. You know, some people might take him one twelve. He might hang around until two three or two four. But I think all those. You know, I kind of have that baked into my Bo Nix because he's my least favorite of the quarterbacks. Um, so I kind of have a mid second, and I, you know, I think if he goes goes in the second round, I don't. He'll probably he might move up two or three spots, but he's probably kind of staying around where he is. Um, but if he goes in the first round, then yeah. And Michael Penix goes where, uh, Bo Nix, I'm thinking is going to go top of the second. Then I probably have to swap those around and, and Penix won't be a first rounder and, and Bo Nix will probably be one eleven. And that's not even maybe necessarily for me per se, but that's to do the same thing that I was talking about at the beginning of this with the quarterbacks is now I can, I could draft Bo Nix at the end of my first round, probably have a pretty good roster if I'm drafting there and I earn that. And now I can, you know, mm-hmm. flip, take Bo Nix and turn that into a quarterback that I like, you know, a little bit more. Can I flip Bo Nix if he gets capital for, you know, even somebody like a Deshaun Watson who's got a little stain on him, uh, but I believe in the upside and I, I know that he's there's a good player in there and I can wash my hands of I don't know what's going on with with Bo Nix. I just pulled Deshaun Watson out of there because I know that overall people have a, a down opinion of him and, you know, w- w- whether it's personal or not I you know that's not for me to say or talk about but overall I think what we saw is some some pretty good floor play from Deshaun Watson even though the statistics weren't there so I'd be willing to do a kind of a a last year and the legs were kind of there and even though he wasn't playing very well he was still scoring 18 to 20 points a game Um, so you know that's the kind of stuff you know how can I flip Bo Nix if he gets the capital in there and that's why I would move him up and and wouldn't be terribly worried about drafting him although it's mm-hmm. really hard to pull the trigger on somebody I don't really love over a guy like Troy Franklin and Jonathan Brooks and Trey Benson who I do all really like and I think that those their draft capital and landing spots are going to be good as well so but that's just kind of the way that I play it and the way that I kind of see it so anything else before we get out of here Austin yeah let's do uh let's do one fun exercise okay. just before we call we call it all right Casey, or uh, for, for all the sickos out there, like that, the people that are still listening, I I love you. Number one, number two, let's make some money. All right, so pay attention, Casey. This is on DraftKings right now. Total wide receivers selected in the first round, the over under is set at six and a half. Okay, feels really high to me. Right, I know how deep this class is. I know how good it is. So let's walk through this exercise real quick. Who are all the first round wide receivers that you you would put money on? that you believe will be a first round pick. Let, let's walk through it. So we got Marvin Harrison Jr. Yeah, lock. We got Ma, we got Malik Neighbors. Lock. lock. We got Roma Dunze. Lock. All lock for first round, okay? Brian Thomas Jr., I would argue, Stop. probably like that's, wide receiver four, right? Lock. That's a lock for the first right? round. Yep. Okay, so we got four guys, no question. I don't think there's a world that exists where those four don't go first round. Yeah. Xavier Number Worthy, five. I think, is the same. I think he's going first round. Dude, he's minus 120. Like, it's almost 50-50 odds. I, I'm thinking of throwing my entire bank account on Don't Xavier do that, Worthy. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think Worthy, I'm with you. I think he's going to be a first-round pick. I think he's going to cl- cl- go closer to that 20 to 25 range. Uh, wide receiver six is, what, A.D. Mitchell or Troy Franklin it's, or it's, Lad McConkey? Yeah, those, right? they, those guys are, you know, somebody, somebody in the NFL, you know, like... All right, so Buffalo two two of those three have to go. Right. Buffalo in, or, in order for the over to hit. Buffalo needs mm-hmm. I, I think for their raw like a guy like Keon Coleman 
for what Buffalo kind of needs and, and doesn't necessarily have, like, you know, I, I don't know where, what Curtis Samuel and Khalil Shakir. So you could kind of take that for whatever it is. And, and maybe that, that, that kind of what I'm saying doesn't make that much sense, but like a bigger bodied kind of receiver who does something different than those other guys, like a Keon Coleman or an AD Mitchell seems to fit into that, what they might want a little better. But I think for the way that I see them going, Lad McConkey seems to be the guy that I would really want in there. Yeah. Um, so I think, A.D. Mitchell would be the one that I would I would kind of there either somebody in the it takes one team and they just have to be enamored with what the skill set could potentially be there with him um, with all, you know, obviously running really fast and, and being built a little bigger than some of those other guys that were that we're kind of talking about here to be the fringe guys. So what do you think here, Austin? I think uh, it's probably six. Yeah, it's it's just. Dude, like six is a lot though. Like I understand this is the class that it could happen, but like six wide receivers going round one. I mean, talk about all the the valuable defensive players that are that are gonna. I mean, that's where the, the value is in this class, right? Like the defense. Like I mean, they're gonna be falling, man. The, all oh, these defensive players yeah, are, sure. are. Yeah. Oh my god! Like Jared Verse, like just some of you know Newton, just some of the big dogs in this class. They're gonna be values. You know, you got Mitchell. Just just a lot of guys. We've seen uh, seven wide receivers come off the board in the draft. That's the record for the first round. Oh, oh, four, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, man. That was like the Larry Fitzgerald. Yeah. One, exactly. Right? Yeah. Wild. Uh, but yeah, I mean, if if the Lions at six and a half, I mean, it could happen. It's just, I think the the conversation really begins with like, is A.D. Mitchell going to do it? Is uh Keon Coleman, Lad McConkey? Yeah. Like, do the right? Jags like that, take a wide receiver? Do the do the Chiefs yeah. take a wide receiver? It seems like the Bills are taking one now. So like. Chiefs and Jags are kind of interesting. Uh, Dallas, could the Ravens, Dallas could, could be the Ravens? interesting. Ravens could be like you know. So there's a couple know. that that are kind of, you know. I mean, shit. I mean, I know New Orleans needs a whole bunch of stuff, but they need another receiver. Um, you know, you yeah. could you could go through a lot of a lot of things there. So, all I right, just, let's yeah, I th- go ahead. No, no, let's uh, let's get out of here. Let's I wrap think this I up. just I don't think it's gonna be seven. I just think it's gonna be under that. But yeah, I'd say six. Mm-hmm. six I'm is, with you. It's probably where I'm at. All right, man. Well, you can find Austin at Austin Abbott FF on the Twitter guys over there crushing. He's giving you everything you need to know about rookies. Um, and, you know, pretty soon he will have a tattoo to match Ricky Pearsall because we discovered that in our last episode that maybe he's got a little Ricky, old pretty Ricky over there. Uh, just needs just needs the tat. You got earrings? No, no. Oh, I have okay. uh, AirPods. Oh, OK. Ab- <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I don't know. You're from New Jersey. Did you have earrings at some point? No, no, never. I did. I nope. did. I mean, I'm I'm a Pennsylvania guy. You're not far from Jer- Jersey guys like earrings, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot. All right, man. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, I think this is a was a fun exercise uh, and I'll catch you next time. Right. We, we yeah, out of here. Absolutely, We're man. good. Yeah. Let's call it. Let's All do right. it, man. Be sure to like subscribe, comment below. All that jazz. We got the Patreon, three extra episodes. We got the Discord. We got we're doing slow mocks. All that, all that good stuff over there. We got player pages about to drop for the rookies. Uh, so we're adding more and more stuff to uh, my rankings. Will be available over there for the rookies. And then I'm I'm just reworking my pre-draft uh, veteran rankings over there. So all that stuff will be available very soon over on the Patreon side of things. You get a whole bunch of fun stuff and three extra episodes. So be sure to check that out. If not. Hit us up on the Twitters. Make sure you go check our guy Austin out, and we will catch you next time.